So, Mr. Ran, just getting right into it, uh, can you tell me how you came to the decision to resign as Deputy Superintendent of Finance for the Guam Department of Education? Well, to be honest with you, uh, Destiny, um, I, I, I knew that the superintendent had a bad rating, a 1.3 over 4, and that he was put under a lot of pressure. So after that rating, we, you know, we kind of spoke as management, and he didn't really disclose what it's all about until just recently. Um, when the controller decided to, to leave, I, w I was in a meeting with him, and I said, well, okay, his last day is Friday. And then I said, let's try to keep him another week because I had my general county supervisor on vacation. Then he says, okay. So I said, okay, he'll leave that. And then he looks at me and goes, well, what about you? I said, well, what about me? I said, sir, I've been asking you since I started to move, find another DFAS, you know, the position that's finance and administration, find another DFAS so I can move to the job that I actually applied for, which is assessment and accountability. And that whole time, they never found anyone. So I had to, I took, I took the job and responsibility by the bull of the horn and, and, and did what I could. And honestly, we have a great team. But it's kind of hard to do that job when the key people that used to do the budget were taken away. And they didn't leave the department. They're still there. And I asked for support. But I was told, no, you, we can't give you support because they're now in the audit. But I thought we're one team. Anyway, so we struggled through it. I got through that. And um, basically, we delivered uh, um, a budget which was finally approved, but all along, the board member, our chairman knew what that number should have been or close to, but never shared that. So, you know, when I meet with the, the, the administrators, the schools, and all the different division heads, I put the packet together, thinking, okay, now let's work together and figure out, you know, what, what should we keep or what can we eliminate to get to a decent number. You know, they made me and my staff do it ourselves, so we did. And round two, they didn't like it. Round three, they didn't like it. Finally, round four, I mean, you know, it would have saved a lot of grief if we were just told, work towards this number. But anyway, it, it, it is what it is. It's done. It got approved by the board, and it went to the legislature. So the budget's not done until the legislature approves the actual um, dollar amount for GDOE. Right, and you know, you mentioned um, the comptroller resigning as well. So uh, who else has left important roles recently and what is the issue that you're hearing? I, I don't know, I just know that the other um, deputy left maybe sometime in mid-January or February, uh, Ken Paris. Okay. Yeah. Wow, so that's two deputy superintendents within a short time frame. Sure. And you know, in your brief stint with Guam DOE, what was the best part about the job and what was the most challenging? Oh, the best part is really working with the staff and learning um, what they do and uh, the, just the different programs. And um, it's just, we have, they have a lot of good people, a lot of good professionals that have been doing what they're doing. And of course, you know, maybe there's some errors or some um, things that need to be enhanced, change, and it's being done. I, I have no problem working with the team. They're, they're, they know what they're doing. I'm not there to tell them what to do and how to do their job. I'm there to support them, give them guidance, and really lift their spirits to work as a team. Yeah. And what was the most challenging part at DOE? I, I'm very honest. It's the board, the interference. It's, I sit in board meetings and I hear them belittle my superintendent, you know? because we're not allowed to speak to the board, right? It's the superintendent that reports to them. And uh, it, it just pains me because he, he's my boss. And when you speak that certain ways to him and implicate staff to him about how bad we are, um, how we're not doing our jobs, that's wrong. Instead of being supportive, what can we do to make the situation better or change? It's not, it's not a positive environment. And I, I sit there in the board meeting because we have to, because we support our boss. But when they start belittling him and giving a certain board member the, the authority, the hour, the 10, 20 minutes to speak and belittle the superintendent and the, the management, that's wrong. I think the chairman can do a better job in managing that meeting 
and when it's a bit out of control, pause it and say, let's take it offline. I hear the previous chair, chairperson, Mr. Martin Mendiola, would do that. You know, because it's, it's not an open air because it's public for you to vent your personal feelings and to intimidate and demean, you know, the people that supposedly be working for you. Anyway. Do you feel that it was, it could have been more constructive? Oh yes, absolutely. More constructive and more professional. Do you feel like it came from a personal, it was coming from a personal place, the, the critique? Yeah, I think so. I think so. Um, I mean, I don't know. I, mean, I don't know what the board chairman has against me, um, but I just know that I'm doing my job. I'm working with a team. And, you know, I think I'm contributing to the education system. There's a lot to do. There's a lot of stuff that we're kind of having to fix from the past, you know, correct what's, what's been happening in the past or that was not done. And we're, I'm discovering these things. But yet, you know, I guess I'm not good enough. And, you know, now that, you know, having been in a leadership role with GDOE, I know you touched on it, but how bad, I guess, is the situation for teachers and students? In your capacity, how were you able to see, kind of gauge the situation? Well, you know, first and foremost, it, what happens in the school matters. They're, they're their priority. We got to put certified teachers in every classroom. We got to make sure that we have proper school, number of school dates in, in, uh, in the schools. And frankly, honestly, the facilities are worn. They're broken. And we have challenges to help fix it, you know? I, mean, I think that's one of the, the issues we have today with a lawsuit, you know? The bathrooms need repair, you know? There, there, it's, there's major issues that we need to kind of work together and find a solution. There's bad plumbing issues in almost every school. Electrical, I mean, I mentioned it, you know? We give the students laptops, but yet, are they able to plug it into the, into the outlet of the school? No, because the schools are old. They were designed many years ago. So we need to upgrade that. And those are come to some of the challenges we need to do. But it's really putting the children first. That's most important. Mm -hmm. And I was hoping that we all had the same agenda. You know, if we're all working together, we'll get there. Yeah. And if I could also just ask, my questions keep going away, but... <laughs> Reading your letter, of course, to set the record straight, uh, you were accused of errors in the preparation of the GDOE budget. Uh, so you said that this has nothing to do with your deci decision to resign. So why do you think the board chair would say that? Because they're focused on finding mistakes versus finding solutions. Um, I'm sorry, but I, I'm not, I was not involved in the, in, you know, the details of preparing the budget. I have a team, so we put it together. It's a system. I mean, you know, you run the report, it clicks. Should we, should we have found it? Probably, but come on. We make mistakes. I, I, I hope the chairwoman thinks, doesn't think she's perfect, but we make mistakes, and when you make mistakes, you correct them, and we did. We did, you know, and they should be a little more supportive. Okay, I'm glad you took care of that, but no, you bad, you, you make, <laughs> You made mistakes, excuse me. It's not, it's human. But my team that put the budget together and was responsible for the technical part, they worked hard and we did our best. Right, and uh, of course as your role as Deputy Superintendent of Finance, uh, what was your part in helping create the budget? Well, it, it, it falls under me. The budget team um, is under my responsibility. So when we began, I had asked for help. The, the, the budget people that used to the budget for years are still employed with GDOE, but they were moved to the audit section. And the, the chief auditor himself was in my position. So they know what it's like, so I asked for help. All they gave me was a schedule and 
some document. Here, read this. That's not how you help people. That's not how you work with a team. Well, we can't because we're an audit. Well, you know what? But you were there. Give us some assistance. But I believe he was probably told, don't help her or don't help them. And it made life miserable. Because I would tell you something. It took me almost two months with my team to put the budget together after 405, 380, 318 to 303, right? And then so one day on the third floor of building B, I ran into the, my predecessor. I said, man, he goes, don't worry, you'll get it done. I said, yeah, man, but it's taking a long time. I wish I, you could have helped me. You know what he told me? Oh, I can do the budget in two days. I almost said, well, then why didn't you help us? So obviously, either his role is don't help, or he was told not to help. And why do you think they would tell him, or, and by they, are we assuming that we're speaking about the board? Yeah, I think so. so we, we, there's a board working committee, okay. you know, for, for finance. And yeah. why would they advise, and we're speaking about Franklin and Cooper nurse, right? Uh, why would they advise him to not help? Because you know what, supposedly in this new role, he reports directly to the board. And I know that the chairwoman's refuting that. But yes, I have, we have his org chart. And it shows a dotted line from, from his off, from him, the um, internal audit, to the superintendent, and a direct line to the board. In fact, many times he says, I report to the board. He's told me and the superintendent that. So isn't it clear indication that he reports to the board and not to the superintendent? The superintendent and I, and along with our, our controller, went to his office and asked for help. He, he was supposed to be off, off island, so I went to the girl that normally does and is responsible for the federal grant and, and all the accounting practices. We went and we asked her for assistance. And she was nice and cordial, said yes. So what happens the next day? She called in sick for the rest of the week. So we didn't get any help. And up to this day, we didn't get any help. No guidance, nothing, no input. And you know, when you work as a team, you support each other. Okay, your audit, you have certain restrictions, but come on, there's, there's gotta be some, some leeway because you used to be in that job. Unfortunately, it is what it is and it happens, so. But it has nothing to do with the budget. I mean, there's a lot of things going on. I could say more about all the stuff that wasn't done, but I'm not here to finger point. You know, I, I'm just here. I just wanted to work and get the job done and help the team. I'm short. The um, uh, pub, uh, public auditor from the uh, Office of Accountability mentioned to us in January, you need to staff up your accounting team, your finance team. Yes, the chairwoman was a part of that Zoom call. Yes, and then when I try to go do that, oh no. Who says you can hire? There is a list. There's a list, and maybe you folks need to look at it. A list of positions that, the super, that gave the superintendent authority to hire with, with not to exceed 2.7 million and a whole list of positions that was frozen. So uh, coming in, they said, if you fill that frozen position, any of those positions, you're in trouble. So anyway, it is what it is. And that's why I say, you know, leave the operations to the administration, to the managers that need to, that are responsible for the day-to-day um, uh, operations of, of the education system. The board's a policy board. Stick to that. Support the team. Be more, you know, ask questions if, if, if something's not right versus to intimidate and to speak down to them, to demean the, the staff. Because when they demean, the, when they speak badly to the superintendent, it's not just to him. They're speaking to all of us, the whole team. And honestly, we have good people working every day, working very hard to do what's right for the children of Guam. Yeah, and I just wanted to segue a little bit because you also mentioned um, the working committee board members was very toxic. Mm -hmm. uh, 
What do you mean by toxic? Okay, so the finance working committee for the budget was chairwoman Mary Okada, mm -hmm. vice chair Maria Gutierrez, and Ms. Christine Baletto. When we had presented the first round, oh, they were furious, telling us, you didn't do a good job, what, what's wrong? You know, the way Mrs. Gutierrez spoke to us, and even the chairwoman, I saw it in her, in her eyes, it's like some demonic stuff coming through. But you know, me and my team, we just took what they said, the belittleness, and, 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 and they can attest to it. But not one of us refuted it because what's the use? They're the boss. So I'm, you know, I'm, I'm pretty much politically savvy. I take criticism, let it hit me, and let it roll off. Because you know, if it has no meaning, and I know it's not true, why, why let it, why internalize it? I don't need to. But my staff, you know, they, they were hurt. And do you think that those, those, the, those demeaning instances kind of worked against you guys in trying to do oh, your work? Of course, come on. You know, I mean, I was really looking forward to a more supportive team to help guide it. Because, I mean, come on, there's no secret. We're all new. You know, I've, I've never done a government budget. It's more, more so the largest department of Guam, you know. So, of course, it's going to take time. And errors, yeah. I like to ask. If any of those board members, they don't make any errors? Because let me tell you, we're not perfect. But when I find an error, I will fix it and I would deal with it, you know, that's yes. how. I, I hear you and just also wanted to ask, so you also accused the board of micromanaging and interfering in operations, but doesn't GDOE management have to answer to the board? Yes, we do. But when it comes to positions, who you hire, come on, that's not a, that's not a policy. It's, 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 it's done. You listen to all the board meeting recordings and you'll hear, you know, they, they question things. I mean, there's even one thing I discovered. Okay, so I had to do the budget by my, by my, with my team, right? New. So we're going through the budget and we get to the administration, the superintendent's office. And I said, hey, where's, where's this attorneys? It's not on our staffing pattern. And then this team goes back and runs a report. Oh, he's paid on indirect costs. I said, what's indirect costs? Every, every position needs to be accounted for in the budget. Local and federal, right? Because that's, that's what we're supposed to do. Well, these people were neither in local or in federal. So I said, okay, put them into the local. Because why? Every single one of the 13 employees are classified employees. They have to fit into the staff, to, into the staffing pattern. I did, and I had mentioned that, my team and I had mentioned that from the first day we sat with the working board. Nothing was set. All the way, until the end of the budget, they question it. Why are these indirect people in, in the budget? They shouldn't be. Well then where should they be? It's, are they federally funded? No. Are they locally funded? No, but guess what? They're indirect. And it is in the board meeting of December 29, 2023, the chairwoman says, because the, our superintendent got questioned about his travel, okay, because you can't use federal, a local funds to travel. Well, his local fund, his travel was gonna come out of indirect costs. Indirect costs isn't discretionary um, uh, funds that's given to the superintendent to use. And that's normally we use it for training, for travel, uh, for uh, subscriptions, and for any incidental needs. You don't park permanent classified employees in that area because if the uh, indirect amount goes down, which it has, by the way, it's gone from 9.6% to 6-something, it means he has less money to spend. So when you have less money to spend, you have to first fund those guys because they're in the indirect. They shouldn't be. They should be part of the budget, either local or federal. So I get reprimanded. Oh, you shouldn't be doing that. We'll deal with it in, in the April meeting. Well, it was never dealt with in the April meeting. And they're still out there. So maybe the legislature will find out where these bodies are and put them in the right place. But you know what I mean? That's kind of like, to me, I call it as a blessing because 
didn't want to help us, so we found it, and I disclosed it. Is it right? I don't know, but I think they, it's got to be fixed and addressed. My next question for you, you know, the elected board members are up for re-election. So what would you say to those members? And another part to that, what would you say to the voters who get to decide who will sit on the board? I'm really, it's, it's really up to the voters. Um, is if you're running to support the education of the children of Guam, know your role. If you're a policy board, stay there, stay in your lane because you're, you're not helping the, the management and staff that have to run the day-to-day -day operation by nitpicking and accusing and threatening the team. Um, I, I know there's one particular that's been there for years. So my question is, you've been there for years with all these issues and problems, school facilities and, and what have you. What have you done? And now you're you're nitpicking all these little things, that's wrong. Maybe it's time to move along and let other people, you know, be in the position to, to do what's right and help and truly be a policy board that would guide and support the administration of GDOE. Well, those are all the, the bulk of the questions that I have, but before I let you go, is there anything else that you think is important for our audience, for the island to know about your experience? I know you mentioned toxicity, micromanagement. Is there anything else that you think is important to share about your time there? I, I think um, for the six months, I've learned a lot and I've really come to appreciate and work with the team. I'm, I'm the type of manager that um, I give a lot of respect to the people, to my staff. And I don't focus on anyone's weakness. I focus on what they do well, because I believe that when you focus on an individual's strength, um, the weakness will just eventually fall off. And then when you have good teamwork and collaboration, and um, you know, good things will happen. Um, I, I just feel hope that for me speaking up and saying what needs to be said, that the board will now truly act as a policy board and become more professional in their actions and in their dealings and give the superintendent the ability to run the operation uh, and give him the support he needs to accomplish what he needs to do. He is, he, he's, he's very, he's good. His experience, his knowledge, his, his education, his background, his passion is spot on, you know? And I think this is what we need. But he also needs to be given the team that's going to help him deliver what he's been hired to do. So, um, yeah, just stop micromanaging and um, focus on policies and be proactive and supportive. If I may, Destiny, I've been on boards before, and I've also um, had boards report. I mean, you know, because I've been in agencies. This is the first board that's been so unsupportive and uncooperative. It's like everything that management does is bad. Excuse me. You're supposed to be more, you know, if I've always worked it, just support the team. What do you need? How can we help you? Why, are, why is this happening? Help us understand. Versus you're not doing your job. Who are you hiring? Why are you doing this? I even, went in one board meeting in December, I wanted to hire an F&M manager because it was badly needed. And they gave me such a hard time that I spoke up and I said, then give the guy my job and I'll step away. Because that's how involved they were in, in the hiring of positions. That's wrong. And we went through three interviews and the, the, the guy that interviewed for the first and second time, we wanted to hire him. By that time, when he saw how toxic GDO is with how the board interferes, he didn't take the job. Sad. You know, it's really sad. 
So, you know, I mean, we, there's some good board members. The thing is, they need to be managed properly and do their jobs as a policy board. Thank you so much, Joanne. Those You're welcome. Are all the questions I have. For Thank you. So thank